Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here with this morning mountain weather update. Right, here's what I'm seeing this morning and an interesting trend here. You know, looking at that pattern shift that's coming in on or after 321, it looked like there were going to be two storm systems, two solid, separate, distinct storm systems. Now, it kind of looks like the second one is weaker or missing from the from the flow altogether, and that's going to have a downward pressure on a lot of the totals. You can see the timing, which has been somewhat simplified as a result. Sierra, Tetons, Wasatch, Colorado, you can see the timing right there, mainly dealing with one storm system. Maybe a little bit of energy coming in behind it, but uh, certainly not what it looked like yesterday. Um, looking at the Banff area, interior BC, a lot of the snow still looks like it's concentrated around Red Mountain, Fernie, Kicking Horse, into the Banff area around Sunshine with less accumulation to the north, less in the Revelstoke area. And this is kind of what I was picking up on yesterday. In the northeast, still looking at scattered light to moderate snow accumulations today, tomorrow, 20 and 21. All right, we'll look at all that in the forecast update uh, here. I want to take you first over to water vapor satellite imagery this morning and give you the lay of the land. So on this, your moisture aloft is in the whites and the blues. And, you know, I talked about this the last couple of days. We're still dealing with this cutoff area of low pressure back here, still sending a little bit of moisture through the four corners in the, in the form of snow. But by tomorrow, this thing is really going to be facing its demise I'm just totally lost in the flow. Uh, but the central and northern Rockies into BC, all under the influence of high pressure. So just a waiting game for the pattern change, which will eventually come. And you've got one big area of low pressure here and another one behind it. So both of these will play into that pattern change. And here's the forecast jet. So by the close of business today, you can see the cutoff and also the ridging in the Pacific Northwest in BC. Now, by the time we get to tomorrow, it's the same. Pretty much the same on 320, but then here comes the shift. You can see the northern branch buckling here on 321. Southern branch starting to get energized, and then the two do come together, and you can see that initial trough moving into the Pacific Northwest. This would be the main storm system during the period now. This is 323. It's pulling into parts of uh, California, Oregon, and Washington, and then it moves into the interior. 324, you can see the trough. Uh, heading towards Utah, coming out of California, into Colorado and New Mexico on 325. And there's still that backside of the trough on 326, but there's no second storm. You might recall yesterday the trough was, the axis was way back over California supporting that next storm. It's just not the case today. It moves it on through. All right, looking at the precip here, latest forecast and uh, radar satellite by this afternoon. A little bit of precip over the four corners with the cutoff, but that's that's it. Everybody else is high and dry. Then we start to see things shift on 320 up in the Banff area, BC. You can see the snow beginning to uh, uh, develop up there. And certainly by 321, a little bit of that drops down into the northern tier. Here we are late on 321. Here's 322. Here comes the main storm system of the period. You can see it hit the Sierra. Idaho, Montana, the Tetons, the Wasatch here on 323, and then eventually into Colorado, into 324, 324 and 25. Storm moves through Colorado, and then it's gone. There's a little bit of energy on the back side, but it fades. There's just no big second storm system to keep the totals going. And so as a result, here's what I'm seeing. New grand total map, um, basically today through late 327, um, the numbers in Colorado have held anywhere from 6 to 14 inches for the most part. The numbers have gone down in the Wasatch as a result of missing that second storm and that energy, but 8 to 12, something like that. The numbers have stayed pretty high in the Tetons, 1 to 2 feet. The numbers have definitely gone down in the, uh, the Sierra. Uh, Montana, Idaho have both gone down. Uh, the Pacific Northwest has gone down. Still looking at a pocket of some pretty nice snow. You know, I stand corrected. It's more towards Fernie sunshine and kicking horse and you can see that heavy band of snow just kind of wraps around those resorts and then on the periphery red mountain revelstoke and marmot are all less just slightly out of that of that preferred flow of that belt of snow so breaking it down by time period rest of today through tomorrow there's just nothing there uh, we start to th see things shift here on 320 321 and 22 mainly through banff and the northern tier you can see the numbers dropping down into the Tetons. Could see four or five there over the Tetons during that time period. Very light snows through the Wasatch and in Colorado. Here's the main time period with that single storm system. 
Um, Colorado, assuming that low spins up into something a little bit more, the numbers will stay um, high anywhere from, like I was saying, 6 to 14 inches. Um, another 8 to 12 there through the Tetons, potentially 6 to maybe 10 in the, uh, the Wasatch, and you can see the numbers elsewhere. Most of them have gone down. All right, going to the northeast, uh, rest of today through 327, light to moderate snow accumulation a little bit today, tomorrow, 320, 321, and maybe down the road as well. There's a little bit of additional snow accumulation, but nothing big on the board as of right now. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in here to this morning Mountain Weather Update. Always appreciate it, and take care.